All right, welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to lay out footings. Uh, this first step is so the first thing you need to know is that footings will be laid out. They'll have a number on them, and then there's a table that will tell you the size, the dimensions of that footing. It's good practice. My practice, ideally, I'd, I'll take a highlighter and highlight the footings so that all the F1 footings are one color. And then the F2s and F3s and F4s, all the different beam, all the different beams and I'm sorry, all the different footings have a they're colored in a highlighter. So it's easy to visually now see. Sometimes you can't tell the size difference, and then you have to refer to the text. And sometimes you're carrying a half set, it's hard to read that. So it's easier to make the things highlighted. Long-winded explanation, highlight them uh, with the different colors. And then uh, what you want to do is you want to lay out the center. So you're going to set up on a control point here. And backside, this here is 15 feet away. Let's zoom in. And then you're going to you're going to run a string line all the way from end to end, right? All the way from point to point. Or you're going to run a transit, or a theodolite, or a total station. There's a number of ways to do it. So let's just say we're using a, ta a string line. Then we'll take our tape measure from this point measure out uh, 15 feet and bob it down to that point and then we have the center of this footing and then we're going to do the same thing on this one and this one and the reason you don't do more is because you want to close out this last dimension so in this case it's a real simple 15 30 30 30 you wouldn't have to do too much math but on others you got to add up all your distances in between and when you get to the end here you want to take a dimension and make sure it matches that 15 feet because it's easy to make a blunder and it you know it could be 18 foot 6 18 foot 6 18 foot 6 21 foot 21 foot 5 18 foot 6 right and then you get to the end and you maybe you made a mistake that's how you catch it you just make sure that dimension at the end closes out so now that you've got your centers Uh, you're going to come back, so now you, there's other there's options, right? You can snap a line if the terrain's not too bad. Or you can have the chain, and you're going to get these points here. That's what you want. So you measure from your center back on this F1. It's 10 F1. I think I did that wrong. So F1. <laughs> That should be green. I mean, that should be the. Uh, this is F1. Should be. I mislabeled those. Let's see. F1. And that should be F2. So the greens are F2s, 10 by 10s. There you go. That's better. Uh, and then you're going to go six feet this way, right here. And where that six foot intersects that line, that's your point. And then you go that way six feet. Over here, you're going to go five feet. All right, and then you're going to have those two points. And that'll be typical. Right, you do that on every footing. Get those three points on every footing. And then the same thing, you'll go this way. And then make sure everything closes. You get the center points there. Right, so you get center points on those. You'd be running those grid lines the same way we're doing here. So now let's zoom in on. So now you've got those three points on every footing, and now you're going to do some calculations, right? So it's six foot by six foot. So it's a twelve foot pad. So this point here. This rectangle here, all these four rectangles are six by six, right? So tools, calculator, we're gonna calculate the diagonal of a six by six rectangle. So we're gonna go square root, open parenthesis, six squared times two or six squared plus six squared, and then close parenthesis, plus six squared plus six squared, all right? 
That's the diagonal for that 8.49, control C. And then you're gonna come over here, right? You're gonna set uh, your tape measure, you're gonna set it up in the middle, right? And you're gonna go six feet. Actually, not in the middle, right there. What am I doing here? Huh. Six. You're gonna come over here, you're gonna swing this arc six, F3. Gonna swing this arc six, right? Then you're gonna swing that diagonal arc. You could do this one over here at six two. And three, and then you're gonna swing that diagonal from the center, control V, 8.49. You're gonna swing that at three. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order, right? It could be in the center here. Anyways, that's how you get it, using that Pythagorean theorem to calculate what the diagonals are. So we'll do the five foot here. So five, five is 707. So the diagonal is 707.11, or 7.0711. But in the field for dirt, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Down to the hundredth is fine. Uh, let's show you how to do that one more time. Square root of five squared plus five squared times two. Enter 7.0711. And then you're going to come down here and do the same thing we just did. 5. That's our first radius. We're going to swing it from this point and this point. And then let's just say we, let's say it's a bigger footing and we don't want to bounce over. So we'll go same thing, 707. Which will be, and then we're going to swing that from here. Paste. All right. All right, so you got those two corners. You could come up and just do a arc uh, five foot. did before and then sometimes if you have two people working on it you'll just go from this and swing the longer radius depending on what's convenient And then you move to the next one, and it's pretty much systematic. And then let's say an odd situation here. Here you have one that doesn't match any of those even numbers, right? Uh, so you know this one from the control point is 13.23. The F3 is uh, 8 foot 6 by 8 foot 6. So we're going to go 13.23. Minus uh, eight point five. No, what am I doing? Thirteen point twenty-three minus half of that. It would be four point two five. Enter. And that'll give us the diagonal eight point ninety-nine. That's that sound right? Ninety-nine for twenty-three should be ninety-eight. Thirteen point. 23 minus 4.25. That's better. So let's draw this separately. V point relative negative 8.98. Enter. And then point relative to there, we're going to do the 4. Point, no, no, no. Zero tab 4.25. Enter. So now this is this is the this fits right in there. That's that triangle that we just created. So I'm gonna do so we could do the same very same thing, right? We could put our center 
say let's say the center here is no good it's it, it's just a hole there's no way to to put us good center point it's sandy crappy soil so but we could still establish our points so we could swing this arc right the diagonal would be uh nine point square root square root of 8.98 squared plus 4.25 all right, let's, uh, and the square root of that, it'll give us the, <laughs> it's not the diagonal I was looking for. Square root, I think I missed the decimal point. 4.25 squared plus, what did we say? It was uh, 8.98 squared, oh, close parenthesis. I think I missed the decimal point in there. I'm gonna copy that control C. And that's the dimension that's across that diagonal, right? Uh, let's see. So we'll do the same thing here. Swing an arc. Control V. Oh, I didn't change that yet. Control V. Oh, I can copy that. No. Hey, if that's nine, can't be less than nine. 8.90, yeah, Man, I think I did the square root of 4.25 squared plus 8.98 squared. Compute, 9.93, control C. Yeah, control V. I'm gonna swing that arc. I wouldn't swing this arc first. God, I could hear it. I would swing this arc first if we had it, right? Let's say that, that you know, obviously, if you had this, if you could get this center point, right? Uh, point right there. Then you would measure over and you would do this diagonal, right? Swing the arc. Oh, not this one here. 4.25. Here you would swing this arc, right? And then you would swing that next arc of just paste that dimension 9.93 from there, right? That, that that you could do. And that's how you would do it. Let's say so now you would do the same thing the opposite side, right? Control H, just swing it enter. So you've done that, and then you could establish these other points the same way. Let's say that big hole was there and you didn't have a point you can do here. You can do this to uh, 8 foot 6 tools calculator square root of 8.5 squared times 2 close enter 12.02 control C. So you could swing uh, the arcs from there to 8.5. You don't know where this diagonal is, so the it's just a line from there. So you would hit the control V and put in that diagonal, and you would go swing that arc that way, and then this arc this way. And you can swing that in case there was a bunch of stuff in the way. This happens a lot, so it's not arbitrary that I'm bringing this up. It happened just today or yesterday. Uh, and let's say let's say you have uh, so you can't get to the center. Let's do this. There is no center there. There's a big uh, big hole right there. But you can still get to these uh, without the center. If you have an instrument, say you have a theodolite, alpha ma. Show you how to calculate this in a typically in your instruments it's going to be degrees minutes and seconds right so to calculate that we're going to go uh to let's go here 
tools calculator a tan of 4.25 divided by 8.98 close parenthesis so we get the arc tangent of that it's going to give you the angle 25.327 but that's not in degrees so we need the 25 that's the, we got that 25 so let's get rid of that 25 so we have 3.27 we're going to multiply that by 60 now we have 19 minutes right that matches that we'll delete the 19 minutes and we're going to multiply that by 60 again and we're going to end up at 37 seconds so 25 degrees 19 minutes and 35 seconds that's how you do it if you got the construction master pro you can just hit convert dms and it'll give you degrees minutes and seconds and the nice thing is it'll store it in degrees minutes and seconds too so if you're just doing a couple of down and outs you can do it that way so that what it is is now the let's do this there i'm going to save this angle We're gonna set it up here. You can actually cite this set this line all the way down, right? So that's not a problem. We're gonna just do what the hell? Oh. Just picking up the arc. So we have that center and now we know this line is now if you turn that angle, you know you're crossing that corner right so it's you don't know how far away and that's where you'll take that dimension that we had there which was 9.93 uh, 9 and then you swing that arc across there or you're, let's say you're holding your tape out at that mark with your nail you pinch it to your nail and then when the, the instrument you have a helper holding your nail your, your assistant your chain man is holding the nail at that length on the tape and then when you swing that tape measure and the nail is lined up with that line there that's where you drive that nail and then you've located it that way because uh you don't have the centers right or you could do an offset but that's i mean if you have a theodolite you can do that or you can just put it in your calculator uh, total station so that's a theodolite theodolite just gives you angle total station will give you distance you could just plug in some instruments have down and outs they're real convenient you just type in uh out 9.8.98 and so it's like down 8.98 and out 4.25 and then hit enter and it'll give you straight out down and out from the point that you're on but they have offsets that you can do too but then then you can just shoot then, it, then, then once your instrument's on that line then you take a shot of the target and go back and forth until you're on that point as they do distance too and that's uh, pretty much what I know about footing that I think might help you if you've never done them or if you've done them and you're looking for a more efficient way uh, that I've got so hope that helps you in your career and thanks for watching